here's what we're talking about in our lineup today on the now resale sites are a great place to find affordable toys but we're finding out recalled ones are showing up on there and we all know the delorean from the movie back to the future well now there's an effort to start making this iconic car again and two things you should know about those cashback rebate websites well they can earn you some money but they could cost you in other ways Thank you, Annie. I'm Amanda Storantino, and this is The Now Indy. If you have ever wanted to save a life, here is your chance. RTV6's Troy Washington is working for you to help inform and unlock the cure thousands of people battling blood diseases are waiting for, especially one 12-year-old girl. For those waiting on their cure, there's no escape from the day-to-day, -day, only a waiting game that doesn't let them pause from the pain in the meantime. She used to be hospitalized um, like almost once a year. Meet Mariah Roberts. She's 12. At just three days old, her parents found out she had sickle cell anemia, an autoimmune disease that's led to surgery, sickness, and pain that can be cured through a bone marrow transplant. All of our um, children was tested. My husband and I were tested and none of us was the match. Unfortunately, this little girl's story isn't unique, though her perspective and positive take on it all is impressive. There are around 18,000 people a year just waiting on a match. 70% of those people won't find their cure through a family member. Let's also factor in the fact that African Americans currently only make up 7% of the database. And it's likely that Mariah's match will only come from someone with a similar DNA makeup. Unfortunately, a lot of patients either pass away while they're waiting for a match to come up, um, or they just kind of have to accept the grim reality that it's very unlikely that they will find a match. Samantha Smith-Michael created Project 44 with her late husband, Andrew Smith, a Butler basketball star who uses prowess and platform on the court to shine a light on the need for people to join the bone marrow registry after being diagnosed with cancer. Our doctor told us in one of his visits, if it was Sam needing a match, I can almost guarantee you she wouldn't be finding one. And that enraged Andrew and didn't think, you know, he thought that's just not fair. All because of her mixed heritage, she'd have less than 1% chance of finding a match. That revelation changed things for the couple. Our initial mission, we wanted to add enough to save 44 lives. Um, but now it's it's bigger picture of changing culture. Um, most of the registry is made up of people of European descent because overseas, you just join the registry when you turn 18. It's something that you do. Both families agree it's about getting people to sign up for the registry with diverse backgrounds. But not only that, it's about getting people to sign up who will follow through if they are a match. It takes about maybe 20 seconds to do the swab of your mouth that you send it in and they'll do all the work behind the scenes to see if you are a match. It's, it's, it's painless. Even though some days are better than others, Mariah chooses to smile. She uses her faith to stay focused as she waits, knowing a miracle can happen at any moment. Working for you, Troy Washington, RTV6. And Mariah has written two books about her journey towards finding a cure. Perhaps you're the match she is looking for. Click the link to find out how to join the registry when you read this story on our website, theindychannel.com. Another longtime state lawmaker will be retiring after the end of the upcoming legislative session. Republican Representative Woody Burton announced today he will retire in 2020 after 31 years of public service. Burton lives in Whiteland and his district includes a portion of Johnson County. Earlier this week, House Speaker Brian Bosma also announced his retirement at the end of the 2020 session. Kyle. Uh, it's been another great day here across central Indiana, but looking through those clouds downtown at Monument Circle, all lit up this evening and even though it was on the cloudy and damp side it's still our warmest day that we've had here in about a week and a half as we made it into the lower 50s. There you can see satellite and radar. Things are fairly quiet, but we are going to stay kind of locked into that cloud cover as we go into tonight. Temperatures 52 in Indy and Kokomo, Bloomington at 53. Been a little breezy right now. It's that mild wind out of the southwest. Those winds, though, are going to start to turn out of the northwest later tonight. And there's a look at some of those gusts. At this point, most areas under 30 miles per hour, but Logansport, a 33 mile mile per hour wind gust. As we go through the next few hours, an isolated shower to most of us just going to be dealing with some of that mist and cloudy eyes. Temperatures will fall back into the upper 40s by 10 o'clock tonight as we have that breezy southwest wind. But again, by tomorrow, yeah, the cooler temperatures will make a return here as those winds turn out of the northwest. Could see a little bit of a wintry mix coming our way on Saturday. We're also going to talk about those temperatures bumping right back up into the 50s before Thanksgiving. Annie. 
There's a new development regarding illnesses tied to vaping. Doctors say they saw lung damage in a Canadian teen that is unlike anything they've ever seen in the U.S. They said it's more similar to the damage people got from working at a microwave popcorn factory. Well, the teen's family did say that he added THC to his vape. Researchers at three universities across the country are developing a life-saving vaccine for dogs. And even more interesting, it could eventually help humans. So right now, researchers at UC Davis, Colorado State University, and the University of Wisconsin-Madison are recruiting dogs. Now, they want to test an anti-cancer vaccine. And that's because cancer is pretty common in canines. On average, one in four dogs will develop cancer in their lifetime. And as they get older, that likely Likelihood increases. The goal is for this vaccine to prevent all types of cancer before it develops. This is targeting um, these new proteins or um, neoantigens that appear on cancer cells after some changes in the DNA in these cells. And what uh, Dr. Johnson and his research team have found is that there's some of these new uh, new proteins expressed on these um, kind of forming cancer cells are shared across a number of cancer types. Through the trial, researchers also want to find out what age they should start vaccinating dogs. And if they get encouraging results, they'll use the information to see if this theory could also apply in a human vaccine. All right, let's start the now news feed. Israel's prime minister has been charged in connection with a series of corruption investigations. Benjamin Netanyahu faces charges of fraud, breach of trust, and bribery. Netanyahu denies the allegations. A judge has put a temporary stop to a federal execution. This would be the first federal execution in 16 years. The judge issuing the decision as a lawsuit over how the execution will be carried out continues. A recall alert from Fiat Chrysler, the company recalling nearly 700,000 SUVs. This involves 2011 through 2013 Jeep Grand Cherokees and Dodge Durangos. There's an issue that can cause the engine to stall. Well, back to our lineup, you may turn to resale sites like eBay to save on toys. But we have a warning, recalled toys like this one are showing up there. How to make sure what you're buying is safe. Martin Acura. The only name you need to know. Welcome back. If you have trouble finding a place to park when you're in downtown Indianapolis, there will soon be nearly 300 new spaces available. Keystone Group today announced the completion of the newly constructed parking garage inside the Keystone building. It was formerly known as the AT&T building at 220 North Meridian Street. It will open to the public on December 1st. Four floors previously used as office space have been converted into 281 enclosed parking spaces. The entrance to the garage is off Ohio Street. The Trouble in Toyland report for 2019 has just been released. And some popular toys like slime and fidget spinners, well, they made the list for their safety risks. After last year's Trouble in Toyland list came out, 12 more toys were recalled due to other threats like choking hazards, toxic chemicals, and more. Well, despite the recall alerts, safety experts say these toys still made it onto marketplace sites like Amazon and eBay. They claim that they don't have a responsibility often, but at the end of the day, when they have the technology to monitor very closely what's posted on their site, they can ensure that these recalled toys don't actually show up. The U.S. Public Interest Research Group says companies have the technology to track purchases, so they should use that information to reach out to customers if they've purchased a recalled product. They also recommend that companies make it more enticing for customers to return an item rather than reselling it or giving it away. But until that happens, they suggest parents take precautions when buying toys. And it's also worth noting there are a number of other hazards for toys that are not recalled, choking hazard, excessive noises, and toxics that parents can often detect with a little bit of extra footwork. The site toysafetytips.org has advice on what parents should look for, and saferproducts.org has a list of recalled products. Well, ahead in our lineup, it's one of the coolest cars ever made. And now the iconic DeLorean is driving into the future. When the DeLorean factory closed in late 82, all the remaining parts got shipped here to the United States. We still have people who don't know that the company is still in existence. Well, we're taking you inside the car maker's future production line to see the plans to bring this car back. Come take a test drive at Honda of Fishers. 
Whether you're older or younger, it's a car we love to stop and stare at. Four decades ago, a Northern Ireland-based startup car company put a futuristic take on the DeLorean. The company still exists, and Usher Qureshi found that there are hopes to one day start making more of this iconic car. With its low profile, sleek stainless steel body, and unmistakable gull wing doors, this was made in October of 81. DeLorean's DMC-12 remains one of the most recognizable cars on the planet. You're going down the road and people are just hanging out their windows, taking pictures and videotaping. Robert Kessler bought this DeLorean with severe engine damage eight years ago. There was some fiberglass damage from the, from the fire that occurred, so I did all that myself. And then uh, I brought it up here to the shop and they finished it up for me and got it back on the road. The sleek stainless steel DeLorean. Only one model in one color was ever released before the company shut down production in 1982. Its founder, John DeLorean, in legal hot water, the company insolvent. Perfect storm of a bad economy, high interest rates, bad exchange rate on the pound to the dollar. With just over 9,000 produced, an estimated 6,500 remain on the road today. But it was 1985's Back to the Future that electrified audiences, cementing the DeLorean's place in American pop culture. Are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? It's that style and original design that's been frozen in time, and DMC remains on the quest to bring this iconic luxury car into the future. We still have people who don't know that the company is still in existence. DMC is headquartered just outside of Houston, Texas, specializing in the service and restoration of DeLorean cars with the intent to one day produce new ones. When the DeLorean factory closed in late 82, all the remaining parts got shipped here to the United States. Their warehouse, now a time capsule, is lined with original parts, manufactured nearly 40 years ago. About three and a half million altogether. Nuts, bolts, washers, glass, interior trim, switches, stainless steel panels. Enough parts to build another 500 cars. In a perfect world, that would lead to an all-new DeLorean at some point in the future. Fortunately, enthusiasts like Robert Kessler don't have to wait for the future. The doors, the finish, the stainless steel, there's just nothing else like it. It's an absolute blast. A blast from the past. Reporting from Humble, Texas, I'm Usher Kureshi. That's pretty cool. Thanks, Usher. DMC says new production is on hold for now, but they are waiting for final federal regulations that would allow them to produce a low volume of vintage cars that would be exempt from today's emission standards. The CBD boom has created a profitable opportunity for farmers. CBD comes from hemp, which has only been legal to grow more broadly since last year. Well, next year, the government should roll out more guidelines that are expected to make the commercial industry boom even more. So growing hemp is very labor intensive. First off, just getting high quality seeds can be difficult and expensive. Little is known about safely or legally using pesticides. Weed control is an issue and so is the risk of cross-pollination. Farmers have to pull all the male plants because they can cause female plants to produce seeds instead of the flowers that they need. And before a crop is harvested, it has to be tested in a lab to determine its THC level. If the THC level is above 0.3%, the plants must be destroyed. But the good hemp can be used for more than just CBD. One of the really cool things about hemp is it's such a has such a wide array of uses. So from hemp concrete to plastics to paper to uh, CBD oil to hemp proteins, um, bird feed. Um, there's a million different things that it can be used for. Hemp farmers can make around $250 to $300 per acre. Vote Hemp says more than 30 states issued nearly 18,000 licenses after hemp's legalization. That's five times more than they did in 2018.
Is there an Indy 500 or racing fan on your Christmas list? Then you'll want to be at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on Saturday. That's when they'll hold the annual end of the season sale. You'll find great deals on racing apparel, diecast cars, collectibles, and more. And this year, exclusive IMS facility memorabilia, including signs, banners, and even old programs. Also, Mario Andretti 50th anniversary items. The sale is Saturday from 9 to 4 on the fourth floor of the Media Center at IMS. Lots of fun stuff there. Yeah, some cool gets to be had. Now we're checking out the view from IMS and the lights of the Brickyard are up and we are getting closer to the cars going through there and checking out some of those light displays here as we get officially into the holiday season. All right, we've got a bit of an outburst that's happening tonight and this one's going to be in the sky, a meteor outburst from a meteor shower. It's a pretty narrow time window here around 1130 to just after midnight with the potential of seeing around 400 meteors per hour out of this one looking off to the east southeast but here's one of the problems of seeing that here in central indiana all that red indicating poor visibility conditions because of the clouds that we have in place and we look at the big picture here all the way back through portions of oklahoma yeah there's a blanket of cloud cover a little bit of clearing there over the northern plains but we're just going to see more clouds here across central indiana but you can try and get in there a few of those breaks and see maybe a meteor or two tonight. Temperatures were in the 50s, the exception Richmond, you're at 48, but it's 52 in downtown right now. And tonight, the cooler air filters back in here with those mostly cloudy skies, 36 degrees. Our winds will turn out of the west and northwest. And tomorrow, nope, not gonna get into the 50s there. 39 for your lunch hour. The wind should be a lot lighter here and fingers crossed we'll see some brighter skies into the afternoon with temperatures topping out in the middle 40s. 41 for you in Danville and 43 in Rushville. As we go through the next few days of the forecast though, we've got that chance for a light wintry mix. Shouldn't be too big of an issue out there on the roads though on Saturday as temperatures will be warming around 40 into the low 50s by Monday. Annie? Selling your home usually involves a real estate agent and multiple showings, unless you go the online route. Well, it's been gaining popularity with sites like Zillow that can offer to buy your home without any of that. But now that it's been around for a year, we take a look at how well it's working and whether the convenience is really worth it. I know, it's exciting. A beautiful, spacious new home. We needed a little bit more space as the kids are getting older and we keep getting more pets. <laughs> what can be a stressful process of selling a home was a fairly easy one for Lee Johnson. We didn't want to deal with people coming in and out all the time and figuring out when we could do open houses and we, we honestly didn't want to do any more work. So they opted for selling their home online through Zillow. Zillow is just one of many sites where homeowners can sell their home without looking for a real estate agent, dealing with open houses, or home repair costs. Just go online, you put in your home information um, in at Zillow. Zillow comes back with an offer. If you accept it, they send out a representative to inspect the home. See if any work needs to be done before showing and selling. There is a, a convenience fee or a program fee that's associated with it that's really similar to what you'd pay to list traditionally. And that's where Zillow is able to make their, uh, their profit. Zillow representative and real estate agent Tony Julianelle says selling your home online is nothing new. It's been around for over a year. In the most recent quarter, alone, 80,000 people have requested a Zestimate on their home from Zillow. But only 2,291 homes went through the entire process and were bought by Zillow. Some people choose not to move forward. Some people just want to know. They're very curious. You know, how how accurate is my Zestimate? How, how, what's my house really worth? So you see a lot of people that are curious about it and they're just not quite ready to make that move yet. For the sellers who decline Zillow's offer and decide to sell the traditional route, Zillow says they sold the home for 0.22% more. Example, 0.22% off a $400,000 home is only $880 more. We feel like for what we did, um, we don't have any re regrets and we, we felt like we got a fair price. We were able to put a down payment on a new home. Both Zillow and Lee say those looking to sell their home quick without open houses or home improvements, selling online is for you. Okay, so now that we know who this is great for, we wanted to find out who it's not right for. Modus real estate agent Kyle Bethu says this doesn't apply to you if you aren't in any big rush to sell your home and if you want the most accurate price by looking at comps around your neighborhood.
Well, next in our lineup, the number of cash back rebate websites is growing and the deals get bigger this time of year. So how much you could get back and what to watch for before you sign up. That's next.